So let's talk about the L3 angle. A pretty sought after, pretty useful little unit. And if you thought this was an actual L3 unit, you were wrong because there are some pretty decent clones out there. This is an invisible sight. Here is the real L3 Engel. You'll notice that the finish is a little bit different between these two, but there are other clones such as the Somo Gear that have similar finishes. So, like I said, let's go ahead and talk about these comparatively because they are a pretty hot topic lately in the night vision community. So just taking a look at things, the real L3 end goal is currently in the center. Everything looks pretty darn close. If they weren't side by side, I think you'd have a hard time differentiating them depending on what you're looking at. Now, the funny thing is my wife, who is not into shooting or night vision or anything of the sorts, was tasked with telling me which one looks real and which one looks like the clone. Well, most people would probably assume that the L3 is a cheap clone because of the not so clean epoxy job that is on this particular unit and just the overall splotchiness of the finish. This is brand new, never even been mounted, never fired. This is exactly how it came from L3. I do want to point out on the invisible site that the epoxy job here doesn't look so great because I did it myself. This one was unfortunately overlooked and I tried to fill it in with some epoxy that didn't cure the way I was hoping, but I was trying to make it a little bit more correct. So I think invisible site probably would have looked the best of the three if it wasn't for that little oversight. The Somo gear looks pretty clean as well. So just one last comparison to the front. Let's talk about the mounting mechanisms. Now, again, we're going to leave the, in, the real L3 in the center. The invisible sight is very, very close. Again, you'll notice the finish is a little different. Invisible sight claims they have some kind of ceramic coating. I do want to point out that the Somo gear is just a painted finish. So you'll notice it is quickly getting some nice wear, some nice rub. This has about 800 rounds through it. So it's it's been used and it shows because that paint just comes right off. This low point is a pretty common rub location if you're taking it off and setting it on things like how we're setting it on this table. I want to point out that the real L3 has a little scuff started both here as well as on the mounting hardware which is unfortunate for me because I think it may cost me since this was a brand new loan unit. But I did want to point out that the finish doesn't seem to hold up the greatest. Now, ironically, the invisible site, this is the $480 ISEG version, mind you, still looks brand new. This one has over 500 rounds through it. You would never know it based on how well this finish is holding up. So this was a visual comparison. We're gonna get into a little bit more than just the visual comparison, but it's not every day that you have these three units side by side. So I wanted to kind of share the wealth and give you guys a firsthand look. So before we get into more metrics on the difference between the NGALs, let's go ahead and compare them with some NGAL ASMR. Okay, so uh, let's get a little bit more serious about the comparison on the video. Now, all of these guys are obviously full power lasers, okay, meaning that they exceed eye safe standards. So if you are not careful, it can absolutely cause irreversible damage to eyesight. Now, as to be expected, the L3 comes with actual diffusers for the 
IR laser as well as the IR illuminator. The invisible sight comes with actual working diffusers as well. The Somo gear does not come with actual working diffusers. They are essentially just covers. Now both the real Engao and the invisible sight come with recoil lugs built into the body and the clamping system is just that. It's just a clamp. Whereas the Somo gear has a similar locking system to like a PEC-15 where the crossbar is bolted into the body and it also serves as a clamp. I think the downside to this design is that it's going to put all the stress on one spot whereas this is kind of helping distribute that stress and should have longer term reliability. Just a hunch. And of course it wouldn't be the 4 Ranch channel if I didn't give you guys actual solidifiable data and I did take the time to meter these units, conduct a tracking test, and confirm how well the lasers were aligned. And I think you may be kind of interested to see the results. So without making you watch a 30 minute segment of how I collected this data, here is the summarized data. The meter is pretty self-explanatory. I basically converged the illuminators to as tight as they would get and I put it on the meter sensor at point blank range. I made sure to gather the data using the correct wavelengths for these units as well so that it would be accurate and comparable data. For the tracking test, I simply just mounted each of these units to a large wood block. I made 30 adjustments in the windage direction, 30 adjustments in the elevation, and then repeated it in the opposite directions to compare how different the laser ended up compared to the start. I made sure that the units did not move at all when making the adjustments, and then took a measurement of where the laser ended up. For the co-alignment data point, all I did was mark where the visible laser was, I then switched it to the IR laser, marked where that was, and then switched back to the visible laser and ensured that the unit hadn't moved again. So if the visible laser was back on the first mark, I called it a good data point and then took a measurement of how much divergence there was. I did keep in mind that there is an actual physical vertical offset between the diodes, so I did not penalize it for that distance. Now, this is not me advocating you to go one way or the other. I am purely just curious to see how something that costs in the ballpark of $4,000 compares to something that is in the mid 400s. And it's kind of interesting that for 10% of the cost, these clones are holding up. But I do want to caveat that there is a reason that US-based companies have to charge the prices they do at least some of the cost that they have to. I'm not completely in agreement that this is worth over $4,000, but they actually are complying with FDA regulations. There's a lot of certification process that goes on behind the scenes that has inherent cost. Also, L3 did the actual engineering work in the United States. This is obviously an ITAR controlled item, whereas these clones pretty much got to have a head start because the design was already laid out for them. So keep all those things in mind. This is not me trying to bash the L3 Engal. It's purely just satisfying my curiosity and I thought I would share it with you to compare these units. Now I know obviously everyone wants to see how the illuminators do, but let me give you a visual orientation of what you're gonna be looking at. I have targets from 50 all the way out to 500 yards. You'll notice that on the four x eight black backboard that the targets are mounted to, there's not only a black silhouette, but a white silhouette as well. And at the 500 yard mark, there's also some steel targets. So here is what you see up close with the bright illuminator and this is what my eyes can see. It was a completely pitch black and moonless night. Now to make things interesting at 50 yards, I put a gray t-shirt on this steel silhouette so we can kind of get a feel for how much IR light may be bouncing back a more realistic target. Here's the L3 Engel, illuminator high, widest beam pattern. Compared to the Somo gear. We're gonna leave the L3 on the left-hand side of what you're viewing. For context, Soma Gear is currently on the right. As wide as possible. Now here's the invisible sight. Visible sight on the right. L3 on the left. Visible sight. On the right, moving, L3, L3, visible sight, L3, visible sight, and both together. So L3 illuminator, as tight as it'll go. 
500 yard target, 400 yard target, five, 300, 200, and 100. Here's the invisible sight. 400 and the 500, 300, 200, 100. L3 on the left, invisible sight on the right. L3, invisible sight. To my eye, they, they look about even in terms of power. Keep in mind the L3 is wider and kind of keeping up. L3 still being shown. Here's the Somo gear as tight as it'll get on the right. So much wider on the tightest setting. Shining at a 100 yard backdrop right now. Somo gear on the right, L3 on the left. So there's the L3 with the, about a medium sized beam pattern and the invisible sight on the right. This is the EEL invisible sight. This is not the V cell. So potential for the invisible sight to get even cleaner. Hundred yard targets. Invisible sight L3. Invisible sight L3. L3 on the left, SOMO gear on the right, SOMO gear, L3. And invisible sight on the far right. L3, SOMO gear. Invisible sight. Go all the way tight on each one. So here's the L3, Somo gear, and the invisible sight. three somo visible sight as tight as they all get see that somo in comparison right side by side definitely not as concentrated I'll go as wide as possible l3 on the left somo gear in the middle and invisible sight on the right l3 as wide as possible somo gear wide as possible and now the invisible sight one more time here comes the somo gear looking down the 500 yard range and then back to the l3 so here is the l3 engal illuminator as wide as it goes on high Visible sight as wide as it goes on high. We've now introduced photonic barriers to the range. So there is light that these are trying to, to punch through. So the L3 looks a little brighter, but it is slightly more concentrated than the invisible sight. And let's go ahead and throw the Somo gear into the mix as well. Also as bright as it's gonna get or as wide. L3 Engal, 100 yards. Here's the invisible sight. It's currently moving at 100 yards. And the Somo gear at 100 yards. L3, invisible sight. And the Somo gear. Okay, we'll go ahead and 
I'm not gonna fully narrow, because here's narrow with the L3, it's too much. We'll back it out to about there. Let's see if I can match rough sizes. That's close. It's gonna be pretty close to the Somo. Narrow the Somo just a little bit. Okay, so these guys are not completely diverged. It's gonna be a little bit more interesting of a comparison. So here's L3, the real deal. Somo gear, coincidentally, this is when I get that artifact is at this divergence range, but still a very, very clean illuminator otherwise. L3 definitely packs more of a punch than the Somo and then the invisible sight. It's right here is the invisible sight. Definitely not as powerful as the L3. Actually looks like the L3 might be a little tighter, so let's try to make it a little more even. Do the same for the Somo gear. That's pretty close, I'd say. So from left to right, L3, Invisible Sight, and then Somo gear. L3, go ahead and converge. So L3 is now fighting through photonic barriers. No issue there. Let's see what the invisible sight can do. We'll get the Somo gear as narrow as it will go. So L3, fully converged, fighting through photonic barriers. And you can very clearly see even those steel targets at 500 yards very well. Invisible sight, not as much output by any means as the L3 but I can still see those targets at 500 yards effectively. And then the Somo gear, I'd say it's at 500 yards with photonic barriers, not really contributing a whole lot. A little bit, but not too much. But here's the biggest difference between these three. If you are talking about just what you get right out of the box, I'm gonna turn the Three of them into dual high. So I'm just gonna show you the Somo gear. That laser is stupid bright and it blooms. If you wanted to precisely aim at those targets, you see that it's reflecting off of them, but wouldn't otherwise be too useful. So just showing you the Somo gear. So here is the L3 and the invisible sight, neither laser is being diffused. These are the raw lasers. The output on the invisible sight laser doesn't seem to be as strong as the L3, but it actually makes it more usable at long range. But let's go ahead and put the diffuser on both. So L3 is on the left. I can actually no longer see the laser. Barely my eye looking through the screen it's difficult whereas the invisible sight diffuser seems to be less diffusing and I can actually effectively see that laser and I could precisely aim at those 500 yard targets whereas like I said the Somo gear no dice there's no way too much bloom so L3 and invisible sight take one look close so I'm gonna widen the illuminator as much as possible I'm leaving the diffuser over the laser so that's the L3 here's the invisible sight L3 on left now here's the invisible sight so L3 definitely has a stronger illuminator but you can see they're both effective and then we'll do the Somo gear overly strong laser. So I'm gonna go ahead and cap that laser just so you can see the illuminator. There's the Somo gear. Here's the invisible sight. And the L3.
So like I said, I wanted to put a quick comparison together for you guys. Let me know what you think. Leave some questions in the comments below if you have any after seeing this. I'm not really trying to stir the pot with this video, but again, I was genuinely just curious to see how it would compare. Now, if you are a laser collector and you understand that some of these units can be very hard to find and hard to come by, I recommend you reach out to the guys at Vital Endeavors. They're very resourceful when it comes to tracking down things of this nature. And at the very least, I recommend you have a conversation with them and figure out which unit might be right for you if you are, again, trying to collect things of this nature. I want to thank you for taking the time to stop by the Formar Ranch channel. And as always, guys, have a good one.